everyone, welcome to the show, and we've just finished playing Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon. So we're going to give you our thoughts today about these games, and more so, like, where this leaves the series in general, because as far as Pokemon games go, these, Sun and Moon are quite different, in mm -hmm. a good way, I think. Yeah, they update the series really nicely, don't they? Yeah, I mean, um, I know that Pokemon's had a bit of resurgence recently, what with Pokemon Go, like... Mm -hmm really bringing the series back into prominence. The thing is, because of the hype around Pokemon Go, I was just expecting another 8 gym battle Elite 4 Pokemon game, again in 3D, just because they can play it safe because they've got the new fans in and they've sort of reignited the, mm -hmm. the passion of the old fans. But we've got something so much better than that. We got some pretty, pretty yeah. good games here. I think that... Uh, I, I was quite a fan of how they were slow releasing information, such as mm -hmm. like the first thing we found out was, among other things, was the Alola forms, mm -hmm. which, to be honest, I don't think will utilize that well. It depends, because if, if you went through the playthrough that I did, and I just used the new Alola Pokemon, no, not even Alola forms, I didn't use any of the old Pokemon from any other gen, and so I sort of missed out on that and just mm -hmm. decided to concentrate and get as much information <laughs> about those ones. And it was nice to see in the background or when you're fighting the other Pokemon, the Alola forms, just to get that sort of more like a region feel. It didn't really matter what typing they were. It was yeah. just, they just fit in with the region nicely. So you knew that you were in a, a unique Pokemon game. So you're pro Alola and Executor then? <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> when you go on to the Executor Island, I was just like, this is, <laughs> this is going to be fun. Game Freak knew exactly what yeah. they were doing. It's like when you go into the evolution screen and you're, you don't even see his head. <laughs> It's just up to his midway. Yeah. Well, the camera, I think I'm sure the camera pans up like that and then you see, it keeps on going. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about the new Pokemon of this mm -hmm. gen. Now, they've only introduced about 80 or so. So this mm -hmm. is following off from what they did in X and Y. And they're compensating for it because X and Y had mega evolutions. Sun and Moon's got a load of forms. So mm -hmm. you're still getting like about 120, yeah. if, let's say. Uh, I really, really liked the new Pokemon in Gen 6. Mm -hmm. contrary to everything else in the game which I didn't really like that much I could say it was probably the strongest batch of Pokemon and when I found out there was going to be just the same well just the same amount of this game yeah. I, I really had my hopes up overall it's a mixed bag to me why is that? well okay the starters took a bit of a weird turn for me mm -hmm. I like that they're all dual typed even though Incineroar looks stupid he's actually quite a good Pokemon mm -hmm. like, fires types all the way bros um but some of them, I think, are a little bit too niche, like such as Crabrawler and Crabominable. They were fantastic in my oh, team. They really? Got, they got me through the Elite Four. <laughs> really? Yeah, seriously. But even though you had to evolve your Crabrawler, like, right at the, yeah, towards the so end of the I game. I had, like, a level 50 Crabrawler, which is just sitting in my team doing nothing. And it evolves, and, it, and it's and it got 200 attack for, like, 60 of the rest of the stats. But as long as it goes first, you're laughing. Oh, okay. Well, fair enough, then. Mm. Uh, some of the ones, like, Mudsdale... Love to base, especially with stamina, because it can just, especially if you just get something like quick attack, it mm -hmm. just tanks hits all the way through. The thing with that that's interesting is it's not the design or the move set that you're excited mm -hmm. about. It's actually the ability, which I've never really considered before to be the standout factor for any Pokemon. It's always for me. It's always been the design. Should we briefly talk about uh, everyone's favorite Pokemon, which needs to stay in the bag? What's that? Nebby. Nebby. <laughs> Spoilers, people. Um, so. This, this no, another thing this game did which was weird was like having the legendary Pokemon take such a weird route. Mm -hmm. I think like it it was incredibly important to the story. Obviously having uh, Cosmog then evolve into Cosmium and then either box legendary. Mm -hmm. I liked that. Traditionally, legendaries are such a post gamey affair, mm -hmm. whereas you know the legendary only legendary gets mentioned, to, like in the beginning of the game. And then you end up fighting it like before the 8th gym battle and that's mm. it. So it was really refreshing seeing a different take where it's not the centre of everything for once. And yeah, it is a bit obvious because you can tell yeah. like it evolved into either one. But then again, for those who like weren't paying attention or just got the game, though, it's actually quite a nice thing and it ties into the story quite well. I liked how the, the, the final sort of climactic fight with the box legendary was like a sort of a trial for it to get for it to get your trust mm -hmm. rather than just like a like a sort of 
nonsensical reason to fight it. It was you actually had a choice, which was well, not a choice, but a, a reason which was nice. Yeah, it's not just stop this Pokemon. He's going to destroy yeah. the world. And also the fact that, like we said, it was in the story from the beginning. You get this sense of just how powerful it is, and then mm-hmm. it, it means much so much more that when you get it, it's yours rather than. I, I think in the previous Pokemon games, they get sort of trapped in a bit of a um, a story hole where they just introduce it halfway through. And then you get the mythical element to it, and it all happens a bit fast. You get told it rather than shown it, mm-hmm. and the like. You find out exactly how important um, Nebby is from the literally the first cutscene of the game. Well, that's it. In that first cutscene, that you still remember just like because it doesn't use its power up, up until it's forced to open the Ultra Beast wormhole. Mm-hmm. Until then, you still remember that first cutscene, and then you get to use it after. Yeah, that. exactly. Now, shall we talk about the Ultra Beasts? Mm-hmm. Whoa. Okay, these these things are I'm just, okay. I've completed the like the, the Ultra Beast side quest now. I still don't know what the hell's going on yeah. with them. It, it, it <clears> seems <throat> like that they from the previous seven generations they've got a box of Pokemon <laughs> that got rejected, you know what I mean? And and then they they've, they've had a, a little look, lucky dip. You be one. You be two. I think and they've just given it like typings based on what it looks like. Just, I, I like to think they've done like the roulette wheel because like it's like dark and dragon. That'll do for you. <laughs> yeah, the first one I was really trying to get this typing down, and, and then I looked on the poker deck. Rock uh, psychic, no rock poison. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> never. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, there's there's one. There's a Kartana, I think is grass steel, mm-hmm. and the, it's actually like that big. Yeah, in, like, in real life, it's ridiculous. I've seen someone nickname that Genji. <laughs> <laughs> great but I, it was interesting because it, people have criticised the Pokemon like designs a lot saying mm-hmm. they are like, too cartoony or they're too much based on real life items this was a nice excuse to go crazy <laughs> this was a nice like this was a nice excuse to go like absolutely mental like because when so when you fight uh, Guzzlord mm-hmm. it feels like you're playing a Final Fantasy or Dragon does, Quest yeah, or like a Monster Hunter sure. kind of game where you're just like, what the hell? Is-? You you have that moment of, what the... Mm. Is this stuff? What's going to happen? And because, like, it obviously doesn't show you the typings before, you're just, like, trying out every single move, trying to make it work. Mm-hmm. We've danced around the story about this game mm-hmm. a little bit, so shall Let's we go, go into Let's go straight that? in there. Let's talk a bit more about the story. Mm. Okay. I've never really been that much bothered about the story in pokemon games mm-hmm. particularly even though i love the story of black a lot and i'll say that it is definitely one of the stronger games because of it mm-hmm. this is really pushing the story in your face not only just with just the amount of characters that they have but how you have legitimate cutscenes, mm-hmm. and i don't mean just moments where the legendary pokemon reveals stuff. i mean honest to god cutscenes where it's like just sit there and just watch the moment play i have a lot of issues with the story but the cinematography of those cutscenes really surprised me because with the Pokemon game, with only its third 3D iteration, to then go from that, from the legacy that it's had, mm-hmm. and do it that well, it was really surprising, and I enjoyed that. But the obvious nature of the story really got on my nerves because I, I was waiting 20 hours to wait for something that I knew was going to happen. Was that, what, um, what bit of the story were you looking at? The, the sort of t- twist on the Aether Foundation. Yeah, so uh, you didn't think that Team Skull were like the masterminds behind mm. it. <laughs> Funnily enough. And then also, the, just the sheer fact that they introduced so many people, and then only towards the end did you really f- figure out just who was important, like Gladion, for example. Mm. I would have liked them just to cut down the characters, have Gladion as a main, maybe get rid of Hal for Gladion. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, <laughs> Hal, Hal has one moment in the story where I legitimately laughed. Which was that? I, I think it's when you go into the Aether Paradise mm-hmm. uh, for the second time when you're raiding it. I can't remember what he said, but it, ha- it actually got a laugh out of me. <laughs> <laughs> Such an edgelord he is. But uh, out of like Lily, Gladion and Hal, they're such stereotypical like RPG mm-hmm. um, archetypes because you have got like just the ridiculously happy-go-lucky you've got the sort of what, pushy Lily yeah who does like, like who does change later in the game which well, is she, nice she was, she, she was really apprehensive at first and it was it was rewarding to see her change but still it felt like they it felt like they had this sort of a Lola region in the Pokemon to fill it then they just had to shove in a story somewhere it didn't. It never felt like it was the main pull, which in a Pokemon game is fine because 
you're not you're there to see the new creatures. Mm. I must say, there's a moment when um, I think it's when you get to the fourth island. It's when mm-hmm. yeah, it's Pony Island when you get it. You just get off the boat, and I'd have thought to myself, and I was I just tried to recap like, okay, what we're we doing right now? Okay, I have to um go get the sun flute because Lily's mother has decided to run into this run into the ultra beast realm, and I was like. Hang on a second, I'm playing an RPG here. Yeah. It's like, I'm not just catching Pokemon now. I'm like, yeah, I've least, actually got a reason to keep going. you had to sort of think where you were going, mm-hmm. which is nice. And then there was a, there was at least a sequence of, of events that you that you knew you could have a few hours in following rather than having sort of just odd things sprung up on you now and then as you got yeah. to go here, here and here. It did feel like quite a natural progression in terms of just... In terms <laughs> you of you mean the fact that she got sucked into a wormhole? <laughs> <laughs> it was a natural story. Well... It didn't feel... Re- there was no point where I was like, okay, then here, here's the point where it gets ridiculous. Actually, no. When she gets... When she absorbs with um, the yeah. one of the other Ultra Beasts, I was like, I want my Pokemon game back. I don't like this. But as much as I criticise this game for the plot being super obvious and like, the overload of characters, I will never, ever criticise it for taking risks. Mm-hmm. And it does so much of that, especially with the trials. Because mm. you just, can you imagine how many games we've had with eight gym leaders, Elite Four? Whereas yep. this one feels just like you're sort of going on along with the flow of the region, just sort of casually taking on sort of these trial leaders and turning mm. Pokemon. And because you're taking on Pokemon, it feels much more sort of integrated to the Alola region, which is good. And also the fact that you don't really learn about the Elite Four champion until halfway through. Yeah, you don't. So your journey sort of... It, you never got an end in sight, but then you never feel like you need to because you're enjoying this new format yeah, so much. Yeah, you're quite in the moment, which is really nice. Because mm-hmm. um, just going back to, like, Gen 6 for a moment, I can only remember one gym leader from Gen 6. I don't remember any. It's the Ice Guy, just because I remember stomping him with my Mega Charizard. That's it. <laughs> I can remember most... If mm-hmm. not all of so the, um, or at least the tasks that you had to do to complete the trials. Yeah, the, the tasks are quite simplistic. Mm-hmm. It is just like taking taking pictures or finding ingredients or, or seeing if Marowak moved. <laughs> oh my! <laughs> oh my god! Well, it's just when you the sound is behind doing the jazz hands. I was like, yeah. is there a difference in this? <laughs> no, <laughs> no difference. <laughs> That's my favourite trial, actually. <laughs> I was surprised how much I like these trials. Mm. And surprised how much I like Totem Pokemon. Because this is a huge gamble because it is changing up the the skeleton of the series. You say that, but it is still do this sort of easy trial, then a slightly harder trial, then a slightly harder one, harder one, harder one. All with set typings. Mm. So it, it is essentially the same formula. But you never, you you never think back to that when you never think of that when you're playing it. It does feel completely fresh. I do agree with you that it's it's nice just not having a building. Yeah. Where it's like, here's the gym. Oh, you've got to fill in this really random prerequisite before you. Oh, the gym leader's not in today. <laughs> How many times have they used that? One of the reasons I like the layout of this game as much is because this is the first game to not use a grid structure, mm-hmm. such as. Even in X and Y and Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire, you know, there was still harsh right angles separating everything. For sure. And coasts were just big rectangles. Mm-hmm. Now the coasts are actually like coasts. Yeah. And hills actually have slopes. <laughs> so it feels a little bit more natural. That's just an advance in Did hardware. Did you notice though. when you go uphill, you slow down? You do, actually. Yeah. Do you, do you speed up as you walk down? I have not. I haven't tested that yet, but there are physics in this game now. <laughs> Slow down, game freak. <laughs> <laughs> My god. But yeah, because the um because you are following a linear route but on a smaller island, mm-hmm. it doesn't feel quite as bad. And also it's circular because of the nature of the island, or it's or it's either a circle or a spiral mm-hmm. that you go through. So you always and past each area there's always a different sort of version of greenery or there'd be a, a rocky place where you go into a cave. We, there'll be a volcano, for example, which, yeah. is, which is fantastic because they use this the sort of inspiration of Hawaii because that region is just so varied in sort <coughs> mm-hmm. of rainforest, beaches, grasslands, sort of really barren um, volcanic land. They've used yeah. all that to make that movement through each island seem really unique. Yeah, that's one thing I was really happy about because when I found out it was being based off Hawaii, I thought, mm-hmm. well, you had an entire game based off France and America and you barely did anything with yeah. it anyway. I was happy with the variety this time. So, for the future, we enjoy the island format for now. 
but would you like to see that repeated or are you more of a fan of the say continental style of the older gens depends which how they go about it with the continental style like if it's a kanto hoen or johto style mm. where you find yourself doing a little bit of backtracking and find yourself nearer to say the elite four than you think and then having to loop back round mm. i'm really fine the that. use of fly yeah <laughs> like i'm fine with that sort of design where it feels a little bit more free flo- flowing mm-hmm. rather than say um Uno- unova which is you're sort of always drawn back to the mountain if they do want to go with the island format again as long as they keep that sort of more spiral or circular design where there's bits for you to go back to at the end of the game yeah i really really love that because yeah, there's the on each island there's a certain section that you can never reach mm-hmm. whether it be because you haven't got the page rider or because you have to complete the game which is uh, Rather than being a post-game section, it's nice for people who do take the time to remember yeah. to then get reward by going back there. It's not like the guy who's in um, the, the the main city in X and Y where he says, you can't come over here because there's a blackout. Meanwhile, one of the NPCs just walks <laughs> right through. He just doesn't care at all. <laughs> HMs are gone. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Gento. Thank <laughs> God. I... Went through most of the game not using a few of the forms. Like mm-hmm. Charizard Glide, yep, you use it all the time. Definitely. Tauros Charge, used it all the time. I personally never used Stoutland. I used it <laughs> all of the time. So what was roughly what was your game time when you completed? Probably about twenty five hours or so. Fifty. <laughs> <laughs> Purely because of that that feature. <laughs> now I, I know that you when a company puts a feature in a game that you don't have to use it. <laughs> but that just goes over my head. <laughs> yeah, I, I've just got this image of, um, you know, you're, you're about 45 hours into the game or so, and you're about to fight the Elite Four, and you're riding Stoutland, like, up the stairs, just I, to be I, sure. I genuinely did. <laughs> the one time that it got tiresome was in the was in the, the desert, where no matter where you go, you, you're not sure which um, square you're going to be in next. Right. And that's the one time I didn't use it. <laughs> But every single other area probably explored. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about the revamped UI and the fact that we have once you've fought a Pokemon, you get the type advantages based on the moves that you use. See, so I thought originally that this would, I would, this would make the game super easy, but it's still challenging. I'm not sure if that's because they've upped the difficulty in certain places or just because I'm used to reading it off a chart anyway if I need to. <coughs> That. See, yeah, I, I've more or less memorised all the type weaknesses. Mm-hmm. So it was like, yeah, duh, for me. I suppose because, they, as we said earlier, they've introduced so many new sort of clunky sort of double typings that it's really hard to figure out. And then with that, you, you know, it's, sort of, it's easier for players coming back who have maybe missed a few gens, and it's so much easier for new players to get into it. They also did simplify it a bit by, if they wanted to go the extra mile, they could have done, say, with Salandit, it's quad weak to ground type, mm-hmm. but it just displays super effective. Yeah, you, it's like a need to know basis. Yeah. If you know that, then you yeah. press this one mm. and that thing will die. And also the, the little eye button mm. that takes such an amazing amount of time off your battling if you, with rather than going into your team, into the summary, then into the battle move. Just one click, done. Mm-hmm. And also with the shortcut to the Pokeballs. Really oh my god, that was They such a, already had such a that in previous games with the last use item. Mm-hmm. But to just have Pokeballs and just scroll through is really good, especially with the sheer amount of new ones that they've introduced. I really felt like with all these new dual typings, this game like genuinely surprises you. Such as, I mean, we've already had normal fighting before, but Beware surprised me. Mm-hmm. Del I had no idea what Del it was. Me. I do wonder though, in the coming games. Because they did it pre in pre the previous two generations, they they did sort of like your classic typings, mm-hmm. so like your fire flying with Charizard, that sort of thing that you remember. Mm-hmm. They've they sort of re released it, but with new Pokemon in the last few gens. So they can't do that in the next gen. They've pretty much exhausted all the dual typings. So what do you think they're gonna do? I think they're just going to keep going with like the common mons, which is like the Rattatas and the normal flying mm-hmm. type of birds. But, and then just just put some bug steel or something like that, some odd thing. Put in like a, a bug fire or... Just, a, just keep on, even yeah. if it repeats from this gen, as long as it's a different appearance and, mm. and a different ability. Yeah, because we had from uh, gold until X, mm. until we got one new type. Mm. So I'm not expecting a new type anytime soon. 
because it only gets more and more effort to add a type and then balance it and so on and so forth. And now we're touching 800 Pokemon now. It's got to be, but do, doesn't that make it ever so slightly stale for people like us who have played all of them? Or do you think that the fact that the appearances will change, the abilities will change, we're going to get new moves, as we've seen in this gen, there was new moves added. Will mm. that keep it fresh? despite the typings we've already seen them before see i think game freak are already quite aware of that fact mm -hmm. because last gen we had the um mega evolutions quite often did change type and change appearance mm -hmm. now we've got our lola forms which change type and appearance and we've got z crystals as well that's true which factor in so i'm expecting more one-off iterative designs from it's, now on it's cause... kind of gimmicky though it's it's not a long it's only a gen by gen solution it's not a long-term thing that they can do Although I think someone at Game Freak did mention they would be open to doing a load of forms again, but obviously, yeah. whatever region you go to. What about, okay, this is just a bit of f fun fan theory. Mm -hmm. What about bringing back the sprites from Red and Blue and just having those in the new one, like Fat Pikachu? <laughs> Fat Pikachu or ridiculously obese Blastoise yeah. or Broccoli Venusaur or something <laughs> like that. That's something. Could you imagine? Because you have the trainers stand with you. So that should have been the Ultra Beasts. And so, <laughs> because they clearly the people alone know nothing about Kanto because they're always asking you questions about it. Yeah. And they wouldn't know what these things are that are like, coming at you. These pixelated things. I was waiting for Missing No to be the final Ultra Beast anyway. <laughs> oh, wow. That would have been a cool Easter egg if they just hinted at it. Do you think we'll ever see the Pokepella go again? Love that. Hope yeah. so. These little Hope side so. features. Just to talk about these side features. Yeah. So, like. Pokepelago, Pokemon Refresh, and the stupid castle thing. Fe the yeah. Festival Plaza. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> These are completely optional. If you leave them, you're, exactly. not, you're not missing out on the game. But with the like Pokepelago, like, we both enjoyed that a lot. Absolutely loved it. Like it was. It's, I like that they they address the thing as like oh the Pokemon in the box are miserable. It's like <laughs> actually they're loving it in here. Yeah. It's much better. I mean, Zygarde's much happier to like chill in a spa rather than be out I battling. Did, I did like seeing the legendaries in there just. Just chilling on just seeing like seeing them run around with like little bee wares and like <laughs> like the starters like just lurking around the not place. only have they fixed the box because they've actually introduced proper touchscreen mechanics to drag and drop yeah. and things which makes it so much easier and also different sort of teams that you can preset and save but they've done it in a way which is pokemon friendly they've made them comfortable <laughs> Give Peter little, is going to be happy this give time. Little activities to go and find you treasure. <laughs> I like how when you send them off treasure, they just go do, 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 into the cave. Hi ho, hi ho. <laughs> and then you've got your slave Pokemon toiling <laughs> on the berry farm. <laughs> they enjoy it. It's fine. You just feed them berries anyway. So, uh, so did you use Pokemon Refresh at all apart from to cure status conditions? No, I did. Mind you, I. I did like cure a few status conditions and I was like, oh, go on, then have a berry. It's nice because now I can trade in Nintendogs because I've got this. <laughs> so, that is our massively elongated thoughts on Pokemon Sun and Moon. Really happy with these games. We're really happy with what they've brought out. And even though we do have our doubts, I think that we're still expecting bigger, brighter, and bolder mm -hmm. things from the series in general. For sure. We can't wait for the next few years and we can't wait to replay that if we get another version fingers crossed they're still perfectly good anyway mm -hmm. i'd still replay them even in their current state definitely right so thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time take care bye